Hello. Today we are talking of defamation from the point of view of a possible compensation. So let's say uh, you decided to sue somebody in defamation and you really collected good evidence and uh, you could prove the cause, uh, the fault, the prejudice, injury, loss. Uh, you can show that uh, your reputation was like actually damaged uh, with a grave outcome, grave aftermath because of the actions and particularly like were spread of some word made by these particular persons. Okay, it's all, let's say, proven. But then so what? So what do you want from that person? What do you ask in court? Uh, well, money is an uh, like evident idea. But very often it's not the first one, and very often people suing in defamation don't even think of monetary compensation. At least uh, it's not the first thing they think of. First of all, they want the statement to be withdrawn, to be refuted. Uh, they think that the court might prohibit to continue to spread that information to this particular source or just in general. Uh, the court might order removal of these defamatory statements from everywhere where it was spread or particular sources again. Uh, you might ask for an apology and uh, very often it's a good proof if ever you're accused in some situation like, oh yeah, you, you are known for that, that and that. You could show no, uh, it was not true and I've got an apology because of the court order. Mm, so, very often when you cannot even prove that you had monetary loss, like financial loss, you could still have some kind of compensation. Very often it's even more important for your future career, uh, for your current status, for your relationship, depends on the situation. Uh, even for relationship in your family with your children, for example, who because of... Uh, some particular publication might thought of you as of a, like almost criminal and be ashamed of you and especially if you're a divorced parent and your children are adolescents and your relationship is already maybe damaged that might be a problem and you might want first of all to rectify that or maybe your wife or your husband is just getting estranged because of those thoughts but well that kind of problem is usually not rectified by a judgment because it's more about trust. But anyways, it might help, who knows. Uh, yet, you might have uh, suffered considerable financial loss or at least it might be a threat because of your partners who didn't, wouldn't want to deal with you for public relation uh, reasons, even if they do not believe the information themselves, they might be afraid that their clients would believe that and having business with you might affect them. Uh, so having that apology and refuting statement might help. Yet money is very often a part of the story. So how the court might evaluate how much is owed and what is owed to you. Uh, it's all, uh, as we said before, like balancing exercise. Uh, so the court would take into account like how bad was that allegation against you. Like one thing is to say that you're stupid, which might be said about a lot of people, me included, uh, and very often, well, that would be quite justified. Uh, the other thing is to say that somebody just personally killed innocent children in some, I don't know, like tourist uh, trip or whatever, um, or molested children or, uh, I don't know, just destroyed some some buildings or pieces of art or whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, so something which is uh, potentially much more damaging and uh, significantly more unpleasant than <laughs> simply uh, being accused of being stupid. 
so the gravity is one factor. Uh, then again, whatever was the gravity, it might really affect the reputation, might not that much affect the reputation. Because, uh, for example, your community is really religious and for some reason uh, the information spread that you're not like uh, very much um, of a true believer might damage your reputation. But let's say your community is atheist, more or less, or at least like uh, uh, predominantly agnostic, or the religion doesn't play that much of a role in your community, so the information spread that you do not follow or obey uh, those particular religious rules would not even be that much of a damage to your reputation, though in a certain point, in a certain place, in a certain context, it might be seen as like very grave allegation, but in fact, that does not affect you that much. So, okay, well, not so much. And vice versa, it might be grave damage to your reputation, even though like in a regular situation it shouldn't be, but it was in your case. Uh, as we discussed very often before, if you watched previous episodes, uh, it's very important to know where the information was spread. Like, was it among your friends or among people who already hate you or among people who don't even know you and don't bother who you are and won't bother and, <laughs> and will continue uh, not to bother who you are? Uh, was it like at work? Was it among your friends and uh, close relatives and family? Was it uh, among your um, I don't know, classmates, former classmates? Uh, was it among people who decide about your uh, career perspectives, for example? So sometimes the number of those people is not that big, but the influence of those people regarding your your fate, your career, your future is huge. And it might be vice versa. Like Half of the world might know something about you and that would not affect you that much. Well, for whatever reason. Uh, if you remember those times where mm, a lot of people who were fans of Apple Mac like really hated uh, the head of Microsoft, and I don't know, maybe vice versa, uh, that did not really affect those people's well-being and, uh, well, as far as we know, uh, and actual everyday life. So it's all, you know, like relative. Might be more, might be less, and all those uh, considerations are factors to assess the damage. Uh, also, when you try to prove that you deserve a bigger compensation, you can show that the consequences are not over yet, that they are spreading, that they're getting worse. And uh, even though they are not actual for now, the potential for those bad consequences is huge and real. Usually for that you need some expert opinion or some like solid proof, but still it's possible. And uh, then the compensation will be bigger. Uh, then it might be that your career is totally ruined, so your ability to earn money is ruined altogether, like, or at least in comparison to what you had before. Uh, for life, it's one thing, uh, or uh, because of the whole situation, because of some uh, stress, depression, and medication you had to take, uh, your sports career is, uh, for example, on a pause for one or two seasons, that would be different. Uh, it's still damage, and it still might be compensated, but not for life, so you see. Uh, the period of time, foreseeable period of time, where uh, you would be affected uh, negatively by this information spread, even if it's removed already, that might be a factor. Uh, 
in the previous episodes, we talked a lot about how much the victim, let's say victim, the, like the aim of the defamation, the person aimed by the defamation might add to the damage on his or her own. And if that happened, and if it's proven by the other party, then the amount of compensation would be diminished. Because, again, if at the beginning it was not so big of a problem, but because of your huge and overreaction that became a well-known problem to many people, then, well, you added to the damage, you added to the spread of the information. Even if you added in an attempt to defend yourself, but because of that, like, furious defense, many people became aware of the whole situation. Then, your compensation would be diminished. Uh, maybe it's proven in court, and maybe you know that, that uh, this particular spread of word damaged your reputation, but only in part, because there were other circumstances which already damaged your reputation or were already damaging your reputation before, at the time, after. Uh, so the whole damage of your reputation is attributable to many sources. And if that's the opinion of the judge, then the compensation would be proportionally diminished again. Uh, also, very often, when some bad word is spread about you, uh, how do you react? You <laughs> spread your own bad word about the origin of the initial bad word about that person. Uh, so you're basically barking at each other, like maybe publicly, somehow. It happens, unfortunately. Uh, it might be justified, and in the real world, by people who know you both, it might be seen as well, unpleasant, but inevitable, and not big of a deal. But in the eyes of the court, that might be seen as unreasonable behavior, because uh, instead of complaining and going to the court and asking that person to stop that behavior, you simply joined with the same kind of behavior, or sometimes even worse. And if that happened, then again, the amount of compensation will be diminished. Uh, the legal grounds for that uh, is the Article 49 for the compensation, email. I mean, the Article 49 of the Quebec Charter uh, and uh, the applicable Articles 1607, 1611, 1621 of the Civil Code of Quebec. So again, to ask uh, for the compensation, you will have to show the court, well, if you're asking in court, of course, because you might ask in negotiations, and you might bring your arguments, and during negotiations you might bring moral arguments and uh, some like not exactly legally relevant arguments as long as they work. But if you bring the arguments in court, you will have to show that your arguments fit within the requirements of particular articles of the Code and of the Quebec Charter. And if that happens, and if the judge sees it your way, or in part your way, then you will have your compensation. Thank you, and see you next time.